This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today, we're talking advanced build tips. Let's get to it. Today's video has been brought to you by Surfshark. If you want to find out more about this absolutely fantastic VPN service, check out the link below or stick around until later in the video. So this first tip is a relatively simple one. However, it's one you may not have thought of and I just recently used it in a video because I wanted hanging meat nearby my fire. So I thought I would share it with you. So if you just place down a cook station like so and you try to place stuff on it, it won't let you. However, if we delete the cook station, we grab a campfire, place the campfire down, then grab our cook station, put it over top of it like so. Now all I have to do is hang the neck tail there and then quickly grab my hammer again and remove the cook station under it. When you do that, the meat remains there. It kind of has that little smoke effect on it. Well, it doesn't kind of, it has the smoke effect on it. And then you can just have ever hanging meat. It'll never cook at this point. It just hangs there forever. And it's just cool to add like little detail to your build or whatever, because you can put this near a campfire or near a cooking station somewhere without it actually cooking so now I can have like my campfire over here and then I could do a couple rows of this if I wanted to I don't know it's just creative and a cool little thing that I thought some of you may want to know that you could do so you can do a couple of them like that or just make it look like you have hanging meat drying in the sun so for the next tip we're talking tree houses you can place stone foundations connected directly to a tree like so because the tree is considered part of the map you actually have stability for the stone foundations. Now you can't go super far out as you see here, it needs to be touching the tree, but you can put them directly touching the tree. This is super handy when you wanna get fire up in a tree. So for example, if you do something like this, you're building your uh, wood tree house and you have your floor pieces snapped like so. You can't place fire directly on the wood pieces like you see here, but if we delete that piece and we grab one of the stone foundations, we can actually snap that stone foundation right like that and then we can place a fire and that allows you to easily get fire up inside your tree house. This next tip is super handy for when you're building up inside of a tree. So if you're up here and you're trying to place a floor piece, it can be a little tricky at times. You can see it's kind of hard to get it to snap. Uh, you can do it, but it's a, it's a little finicky at times and you gotta walk like right to the edge to get it. If you're having problems with that, all you have to do is take one of these little tiny pieces here and then you can easily snap one of those pieces on place in place of it right there. And then once you've done that, snapping the floor pieces on are super simple. And then you can just break those and collect your wood back. So you just place the little piece like so. And then sometimes you can get it to snap like all the way out like that. Other times it snaps inside, snaps like in the middle. Either way, it doesn't really matter because once you've done that, it's super easy to then snap the floor piece. And you're not like standing there on the edge, almost falling off, trying to get it to snap. And then you're standing where it needs to snap. And it can just be a little finicky and a little weird at times. So hopefully that helps you when it comes to building out from above. The next two tips are all about item stands. The first one is there's a lot of different items that give off light. And when you place them on the item stand, they give off just a tiny little bit of light. Now it's nothing too crazy. It's not going to light up your house, but it can be used to create like cool little lighting effects in and around your house. As you see here, the poison resist gives off a green light. The frost resist gives off a blue light. Yellow mushrooms give off like a little nice Light, light feel and then the certling trophy head gives off like a normal torch light but it's not as much but it's the same same kind of color but it's that red tint to it but it's just right there behind it just a cool little fact that you can use for kind of add more detail to your build little lighting effects because you can place these in areas where they may be covered up and still get those little lighting effects so you can see here I placed a personal chest over top of the mushroom but we still have that yellow lighting effect underneath the personal chest. If I remove these, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So there you go. It looks like our chest now has an under light to it. So just something to help you add a little more detail to your build. Speaking of adding detail to your build, that leads us into our next one. Item stands can be stacked for varying effects. You can do a lot of cool things with them. So for example, if we put one down and then we move it just a little bit down like so, and then we go over here and we grab the trophy of, or the skeleton trophy and we grab the wraith trophy. If I place the skeleton first, 
first on this one right here. So we look at that one and hit six. And then I look at the one in the back and I hit seven and place that. You can see now we have a hooded man or a hooded, it's death or whatever. Uh, you could do a lot of different cool little things with stacking the item stands like that. Did you know your internet service provider sees everything that you do online? Do you know how you can stop them from seeing what you're up to? You can use a VPN. A VPN allows you to become invisible online by acting as a shield between you and the open internet. This is not only great for when you're at home, but also for when you're out and about and you're connecting to untrusted networks on your phone, tablet, or laptop. And the great thing about Surfshark is you can secure all those devices at the same time because Surfshark gives you unlimited connections, unlike other VPNs that limit how many devices that you can use at one time. Using a VPN also allows you to view websites that are region blocked. All you have to do is choose a server that's in the country of the website you're trying to view and bam, they have no idea you're not really from there. Surfshark also allowed me to test their service and I love it. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this ad. I never have any issues and connecting is fast and easy. I legit use it on my phone every time I leave the house because I'm paranoid and I don't trust risky hotspot locations and I like quick internet. So if you're interested, click the link below for 27 months at 83% off. That's a crazy cheap price of only $59.76. Or you can choose one of their other billing options. And the great part is if you're unhappy for any reason, they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can try it. And if you don't like it, just cancel it. Get your money back. And I mean, come on, over two years of service for only 60 bucks. That's an insane deal. And unlimited devices. That's a crazy good, just look at all the other VPNs out there and compare them, if you don't believe me. It's a really good deal. So click the link below and check it out. Next, we're gonna talk about insetting walls and a bunch of cool things you can do with that. So if you have your stone foundation or your stone wall like so, and you go to place the wood wall on top of it, you can see it only wants to snap to the front or the back. But if we grab one of the doors here and we place the door on the front or the back, it doesn't matter, just place the door like so. Then we grab a wall. You can see we now have three snap points here. If we snap it to the back one, we are now in the middle of that uh, floor piece there or foundation wall piece, whatever. You can see we're in the middle of it. That gives us depth to our build now. And we can do the same thing with the normal wood floor pieces. So we grab them like that. We snap the door just like so, and then we grab the wall and we snap it back. You can snap it as far back as that, or you can, I like doing the wood ones right there, but you can do a lot of cool things with this. For example, we can add depth by placing something like that in front of our wall, and then we just snap the other one like that, and then we can go through and do the same thing. And you can see how this starts to add more depth to your build and can create interesting patterns and cool stuff to look at and stuff like that in front of your, or on your build. Same thing with this. You can do the exact same thing when you mix the stone in. So we can do something like that. Then we can come over here and grab the stone pillar and mix in some stone and some wood, and you can get some really cool effects. Now, that's not all. By insetting these walls, you can also do things like hide lighting. So if we grab our door and then we take this back all the way like so, and we go over here to our furniture and we grab some lighting here, and we place that down. Now we go back over to our wall and we just snap that in the front like so. Now we can delete this and we can go ahead and build a full wall here to completely hide that. So not only do you end up with extra thick walls so it's harder for things to break in and break into your house. If we change the time of day, you can see we still get the lighting effect from the torch that is now hidden inside the wall. You can see we get it all the way around. So if you wanna create lighting effects in and around your base without having the actual lighting things being shown, that's a really easy way you can hide them. You can see the torch is still in there. And you can do this with the wood as well. And you can also make them the walls super thick if you want to. So we can go like that and we can place one towards the back. We can go through here and place one like that. And then there you go. You can see there we have made them three thick. We can also hide a torch in there if we want as well. So we can put that torch down like so. We can come back over to our wall pieces and snap it just like that. And there you go. Now we have completely hidden the torch from sight and it looks like the wall is putting off all of the light.
Really cool effect. I like it. I'm going to start doing this in my builds more often because I want the light, but I don't always like all of our lighting options. So it's nice to be able to have the light without actually seeing the lighting options. Next up, we're talking spiral staircases. So there's two kinds of spiral staircases. There's this one here, which I really love this one here. And there is this one here using the traditional stairs. I like this one, but this one's something that I feel like this would be better on like the outside of a house because it's so large and sweeping that on the inside of a house, mm, I don't know, you might find use for it, but I'm gonna show you how to do both of these. And it's relatively simple. One is a bit more tedious than the other. So you grab your pillar like so, you place it down, then you wanna grab a beam and you snap it like that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to remove that pillar, snap the pillar back and you're gonna rotate it one. And then you're gonna grab the beam again and you're gonna see that when you try to place the other beam or you try to place the beam there, it wants to snap down. You're just gonna hold shift and you're gonna look at the pillar and then now you have to position it manually but you wanna get it down to the point where it just snaps back like so. Now at this point, you should be able to walk up it flawlessly. Now you're just going to rinse and repeat this. So you delete the beam again, rotate it one, and then, or the pillar, and then go back to the beam. It's gonna snap, you're gonna hit shift, you're gonna place it, and now you can walk up it. And then you just keep doing this. It's super, super, super tedious because you have to do it for however many steps you need. You're stopping and rotating each time, hand placing, one of the beams there, and then you can create this. It may take you a little while to do, but you can't deny that the effects of it look absolutely fantastic. You actually have a legit spiral staircase. We can also use normal stairs for a similar effect. So what you're gonna do is grab a beam like so, grab the normal stairs, and then you want it to snap to the bottom like that. So you can see how it snaps there. And then you're gonna grab another beam and or a pole, whatever, and then you're going to go like that. Just rotate it one. So you're gonna, it's gonna snap right to the corner. You're gonna rotate it out one. Then you're gonna go back to your stairs and your stairs should snap right into place like so. And then you're just going to rinse and repeat that. So wood pole right at the end, rotate one, go to stairs and then snap and that creates a nice spiral staircase effect. Now you're gonna have to support these as you see that I've done up here because after a little bit of time, it's going to start to lose stability. So you gotta make sure that you snap some pillars in there in order to support it. And then you just go through and delete the top parts of the beams and then you have a nice spiral staircase effect. And for those of you who are wondering, you can do this with ladders as well. So you grab your ladder, it's gonna snap there. You grab your uh, pillar, you're gonna rotate it out one like so, place your next, and then you can just delete it. And there you go, you can spiral your ladders like so. Now for the railing for it that I did for that, uh, it's a little bit different than what you would expect. I started off with the 45 degree for both of the, both sides. So you grab the 45, it's gonna snap in place like so. Then you move on to the, what is it, the 26? for this one for the outside. And that should keep your outside at a nice distance from the the edge there all the way up. And then for the inside though, you're gonna stick to the 45 and you're just gonna rotate it in one the same way you rotate the 26 in one as you're going around. So you're gonna, it's gonna snap, you're gonna rotate it in, it's gonna snap and then you're gonna rotate it in. And you just do that all the way around. And that's how I created the railing up here. You can see there the two uh, 45s and then I use the uh, 45s all the way around for the inside and then the 26s for the outside. The one downside to this one that I noticed is you can get stuck uh, on the edge a little bit. You have to sprint up it because there's like that slope there. If you sprint up, there's no problems running up it, but you can, you can kind of get stuck a little bit. Uh, so you may want to finagle it a little bit and try to get it to actually like go down. It is possible if you freehand place it. So if you grab your pillar, do the same thing that we did before, it's gonna, the first one's gonna snap, then you grab your second one, rotate it out one, and then you wanna kinda freehand place it, so you use that as your placement, you hold shift, you can see it snaps out from the side a little bit, and then I'm just gonna lower that down until that bottom stair is aligned with my top stair. 
once you've done that, you shouldn't get stuck at all. But then when you do that, you're going to end up with this like little outcropping piece there. Then you see, we didn't really, we don't really have that with this piece here. It kind of, it's much smoother. So you don't have that little step up there where you get stuck. However, you now have to deal with that little outcropping piece there. And that's pretty much it for this one. Just a few little quick tips that I've picked up along the way in my building journey. Hopefully you found them helpful. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim videos. And I don't just cover Valheim, I cover all kinds of different games. So you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I wanna give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.